Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, why four whistleblowers who were fired by a Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton say their legal battle is not over yet. One of the biggest political fights of the year has been scheduled up next when Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is set to face off against the man who could be considered his political opposite, California uh, Governor Gavin Newsom. Outside with live cam, when I went to bed last night, we had some storms popping up here in Bear County. I don't know what happened after that because I was out. But we'll check for Justin and get a, a recap of last night's storms. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. It is September 26th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, didn't see a whole lot of rain yesterday, but the cloud cover was nice while it lasted. But I wonder if we'll be, have a little chance today. Let's get an update on those rain chances for Justin, who is in for Mike. Good morning. You're right about little. There, there is a little chance today. Most of us missed out on rain yesterday. A few of us did get some showers and storms right around the evening. It wasn't a lot. Still managed to get up to 98 yesterday, which just seems unfair at this point. So the San Antonio rain dome is in full effect. It felt like again yesterday. We just sort of missed out on the progression of storms. There still are a few out west, Del Rio, Eagle Pass. These are dying down. So the radar is pretty quiet right now. I, I think as we get into the afternoon, you'll see a few more pop up with the heating of the day but it'll be isolated. So the weather where you live right now, temperature 76 at the airport, 75 New Braunfels, 74 in Seguin, 70 in Bernie, 71 Kerrville. Not bad, but I think we have some cooler mornings on the way too. Some drier air begins to filter in later this week. So there's that to look forward to. Our case at 12 hour forecast by 7 a.m. We should be down around 74 and then by the afternoon, 86 at lunchtime and then the afternoon we'll get those temperatures up to around 95 or so. There is a 10% chance of a shower storm popping up uh, uh, here or there. Again, it, it'll be few and far between. One last look at the radar. Anything we're seeing out there out west this morning dying down. Much more on the forecast. We got some tropics to talk about, some tropical activity and Del Rio. An important distinction yesterday. We're going to look at that here in just a few minutes, guys. Justin, thank you very much. We have a traffic alert. We do have problems early this morning. A minor accident causing major slowdowns right now. You're looking live at the Transkai camera showing a backup of traffic and first responders responding to an accident at 35 South at Space Center. So kind of the opposite side of Bamsey on the east northeast side right now. It's only a minor accident affecting one lane, but uh, it's affecting that ramp in a big way, and we are seeing a backup. We'll uh, keep an eye on it for you till Steven gets here in the studio coming up at the top of the hour. Four whistleblowers who were fired by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton say their legal battle is not yet done. Those former top deputies were dismissed after making reports to the FBI about alleged actions taken by Paxton for the benefit of an Austin area real estate developer. Now, Paxton was acquitted earlier this month in a Texas Senate impeachment trial. Blake Brickman, who served as Deputy Attorney General for Policy and Strategy under Paxton, shared harsh words for Paxton and Defense Attorney Tony Busby. Now, Brickman also saying today or yesterday that the battle ahead is about truth and justice. The idea that Tony Busby or Ken Paxton think that the top eight people in his agency going and sitting around a round table at the FBI and telling them their first person accounts is not evidence is proof of how absurd Paxton's point was in this whole trial. And what he did to my colleagues was shameful. And Tony Busby should be ashamed of himself. He's a disgrace. In response, lawyers at the Attorney General's office are asking the Texas Supreme Court to keep the case an abatement or halted for two more years. This morning, two political heavyweights have now agreed to debate each other. The move is fueling speculation that both are eyeing the White House. Here's ABC's Lionel Moyes with more on the upcoming showdown. This morning, it's official. One of the biggest political fights of the year has been scheduled. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis will face off against the man who could be considered his political opposite, California Governor Gavin Newsom. The 90-minute debate will be moderated by Sean Hannity on Fox News in November. Newsom, who has been rallying support for the Biden-Harris ticket, repeatedly saying he is not running for president in 2024, was asked again on 60 Minutes Sunday. Does cleaning up the streets of California factor into a potential presidential run? I I'm never going to overpromise that in the short run. I mean, we are struggling in this state. Is that a yes or a no? That was a, 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 a never-ending uh, response to your okay. question. 
His face-to-face -face showdown with DeSantis has been debated for some time. Newsom's spokesperson saying, We've agreed to the debate, provided there is no cheering section, no hype videos. We want a real debate, not a circus. DeSantis's team saying, Whether Newsom or Biden is the Democratic nominee in 24, they both offer the same failed and dangerous ideology for America that helped get us in this mess. But before the governor square off, seven GOP candidates are prepping for tomorrow night's primary debate at the Reagan Library in California. Not on the list, former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, who failed to meet the requirements. President Trump is once again skipping this debate and will instead speak to striking auto workers in Detroit. Polls show Trump leading the primary field by nearly 40 percent, with 54 percent support among Republicans. A recent poll found Ron DeSantis slipping to fifth place in the crucial state of New Hampshire. A showdown with Newsom could be a worthy spotlight. Meanwhile, the Biden campaign is reportedly sending Governor Newsom to tomorrow's GOP debate to speak on behalf of the president's policies. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. Experts in presidential and U.S. labor history say they cannot recall an instance where a sitting U.S. president has joined an ongoing strike President Biden will do that just today, which is the 12th day of the United Auto Workers strike against major automakers. It comes one day before President Trump will make his own visit to meet with striking UAW members. Biden has repeatedly sided with the UAW during the strike, saying the workers should participate in the car makers' riches now that he says the industry is roaring back. Hollywood writers are officially off the picket lines and could be back at work as early as this week, but another strike looms against major video game companies. sag after members voted overwhelmingly in favor of a strike authorization against the video game industry. However, the Actors Union says strike authorization does not mean a strike will actually happen. No one won Powerball last night. That means the jackpot has now soared to an estimated $835 million. No ticket matched all six numbers. However, according to the Texas Lottery's website, one person in Texas won $50,000. Next drawing is tomorrow with a cash prize over $390 million. According to Powerball, the odds of winning the jackpot are 1 in 292.2 million dollars. Somebody win that thing and make it rain. I know, but the chances are like... Really tiny. <laughs> Justin's over there practicing making it rain. Right. And it's all dollars, too. Hopefully, hopefully. So he's going to be here a while. Uh, 437, 76 degrees. The hallways and courtrooms in Bear County are hectic this week. Up next, the case of a man accused of shooting three San Antonio police officers as they tried to arrest him. Go outside with live cam on our Tuesday morning. We thank you for starting your day with us here on GMSA as we are now, can you believe it, Steph? 90, nine zero days until Christmas. Ah, 90 days. Man accused of leading officers on a chase and shooting three of them and causing a recent standoff is in court this week. That's one of several cases in a Bear County courtroom, including a plea deal for a man accused of concealing a corpse. Eric Hernandez has the court case breakdown. The hallways and courtrooms hectic to start the week as numerous judges had long dockets to get through. One of the cases involves Jesse Garcia, the man accused of shooting three San Antonio police officers as they tried to arrest him in late August. It sparked a long standoff with police at a west side apartment complex. His pretrial hearing was quick and involved a change in attorneys. Garcia is not scheduled to be back in court until he is indicted. In another courtroom, defendant Adam Rangel accepted a plea deal. Rangel is one of three people charged with concealing the corpse of Gloria Martinez. Martinez's body was found stuffed inside a plastic bin in the 2400 block of San Luis Street in July 2022. Rangel will be sentenced to eight years in prison, but not for the woman's death. But the judge said a murder investigation is still pending in the case. I'm going to go forward with the plea bargain, but it's my understanding that that investigation is still pending. So whether or not you're involved, not involved, whether this is, you know, finalized in the future and you're excluded as a participant or not, you have to understand that it's still pending. But Hell's sister, Allison Paderes, also took a plea deal. She was given a two-year sentence. Their father, Frank Rangel, is scheduled in court next month. Meanwhile, in the 227th District Court, a jury is being picked for an intoxication manslaughter case from 2017. Paul Donaldson is accused of driving drunk, heading the wrong way on I-35 and hitting 28-year-old Armando Ortiz head-on, killing him. After numerous delays, the case is finally going to trial. 
Testimony is expected to begin tomorrow. If found guilty, he is facing up to 20 years in prison. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 442, 76 degrees. It's costing a lot more these days to keep your vehicle in top shape. Up next, we're going to tell you how much more it will cost and how to avoid paying too much. Plus, if you're hoping for some plump pumpkins next month, you may be out of luck. Why finding that perfect pumpkin may be nightmarish for some this year. Welcome back. It's 445. So pumpkin farmers are warning consumers that due to extreme weather in some areas, Pumpkins may be smaller and more expensive this year. ABC's James Longman has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look... Oh, great pumpkin, where are you? Finding that perfect pumpkin may be nightmarish for some this year because of the weather. We went out probably a month ago. It's just the blooms weren't opening and we couldn't hardly find any pumpkins. From New Jersey to Kentucky and all the way down to Texas, farmers battling a whole host of conditions, squashing those perfect pumpkin dreams. Rain can be detrimental, especially if you pair it with the heat because you're going to get a very humid nature. It can create de disease and hinder growth very easily. Um, they're far more susceptible to the rain damage than they are the drought. Um, and that does create concerns about production. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you when the best time to buy your gourds is. With your GMA First Look, I'm James Longman, ABC News, at Happy Day Farms, New Jersey. Switching gears a bit at 446. If you've had to take your car in for repairs lately, it's probably cost more than usual. Courtney Friedman shows us why shortages are happening industry-wide. Car repairs are not a luxury, they're a necessity which is why spiking auto repair prices are hitting customers hard. The cost of doing business and the cost of parts and the cost of labor, it, it's, it's all increasing in today's market. Miracle Body and Paint CEO Manuel Rubio says the supply chain issues and inflation have forced a spike in the price of parts, up an average of 15%. You've got rails, you've got bumpers, you've got headlamps and radiators and, and condensers and doors and hoods. Right here, this part. This car right here. If you couldn't get this part, then this car can't be fixed. Right? It can't be repaired. It wow. won't be able to be completed. That's right. And how much more expensive is this part right now? This part has probably gone up 20% in the past three years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. And, and it's going to go up again because of the strike that's going on. They're going to reach an agreement somewhere between 20 and 40%, and that's going to have to get passed on. To, to the consumer. The auto union strikes have lasted two weeks so far. If we don't resolve this in, in, by the end of October, we are going to have some serious um, issues concerning parts. But it's not just the parts. There's also a shortage of auto technicians. So we've got educational groups, we've got high school groups, we've got vocational groups, we've got colleges, and they're all stepping up and, and encouraging and promoting um, the ongoing education of automotive repair. Rubio says many cars are now computers on wheels, and he does see young people taking an interest in the technology. We have hope. But his hope for now is that customers will remain understanding and patient. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with TransGuide. Still problems there at I-35 at Space Center. A pretty big slowdown there. It looks like uh, one or two lanes completely. Well, one lane blocked and then slow moving on the other lanes. Yeah, southbound 35 at Space Center. We've been watching it for a little while now. It continues. And uh, Stephen is also watching it as he get re gets ready to join us at the top of the hour. So that's a big one. I think there's another one down on the southwest side, 41035 area. Um, so we will get an update on that one as well. Hopefully both will clear before Stephen gets here. Oh yeah, we hope so, because that's when a lot of more people will be headed out on the roadways. Yeah, it's going to start getting busy. Thankfully the roads are dry. I mean, I don't know if that's, well. we're thankful for that or not. <laughs> we would like to see some rain. Yesterday there was some hit or miss storms, but we didn't get a lot here in San Antonio. Let me show you some of the totals. Uh, downtown, about four tenths of an inch. So that was one of the, the big winners yesterday. Uh, Fair Oaks Ranch that came early in the morning about 0.81 Bandera picked up some rain Medina Lake uh, Sutherland Springs Lavernia you also saw some rain but you'll see by and large Bear County kind of missed out on really any of the, the good healthy rains and uh, that that's just the way it is uh, unfortunately uh, there was rain to our north rain to our south and east we just didn't get it at least a lot here in San Antonio uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about 
uh, Del Rio yesterday. One of the hottest places in the country, 100, it was the hottest place in the country, 105. They've had 55 days this year at 105 or above. That is incredible. It has been one heck of a year. The next highest number, 2020, 31 days. So congratulations, Del Rio. Take the award for the hottest place in the country yesterday, and uh, it's still going to be hot again today. There were a few showers out there yesterday or this morning, just not seeing a lot. Uh, so far uh, this morning and looks like my clicker is not working so I'm gonna have to come over here to the weather center but uh, again heat was a big deal yesterday got up to 98 yesterday here in San Antonio and uh, again 105 there in Del Rio so let me see if I can get this thing started uh, so we can get through the rest of the forecast which by the way uh, does include a few showers and storms this afternoon so uh, we'll go on to the weather where you live outside 76 you no, you're good, man. We got it. Thank you, though. Uh, 76 at the airport, 75 New Braunfels, 74 Seguin, 70 in Bernie, 71 Kerrville. So uh, not a bad morning. Temperatures will uh, perhaps fall a little bit more before it's all said and done. If we can get into the low 70s, it's not bad. Uh, we'll have a decent stretch this morning before those temperatures start to warm up. Uh, the current dew point in the low 70s, so it's still pretty sticky out there. We had a weak frontal battery. We have a weak frontal battery that sits just to our north. Uh, and so the dry area has not really made a good push. And so with that in mind, uh, it's still going to be pretty sticky the next couple of days. Uh, I think in the afternoons, it gets a little drier. And then especially as we head into the weekend, we'll start to see some drier air work, work into the area. So that'll help a little bit. There's that front. Hey, it's not much of a front, honestly, starting to wash out. But it could be the focus for a few more storms today. So that's why we can't completely completely ruled out. You saw some of the storms that developed overnight and then pushed south towards Corpus Christi. Those have moved away from us and away from Del Rio and Eagle Pass, two places that did see a little bit of rain overnight. So here's our forecast. A couple of showers. This is five o'clock. This model is consistently overdone. The rain chances. So keep in mind, it's going to be a little more spotty than what this looks like. We're going to call for a 10 to 20% chance of rain today. All that dies out tonight. And then as we get into tomorrow, a few more showers and storms develop. 20% uh, chance on your Wednesday. Again, don't bet on it uh, because it really will be hit or miss type stuff. 74 at 7 a.m. Noontime, 86. And we make it up to 95 today. Just that 10% chance of uh, some showers and storms. And the extended forecast, uh, 95 will be the number in the next few days, and then 94 uh, Friday through Sunday, but with some lower humidity. Uh, mornings get maybe a little more tolerable by the weekend. Still, though, we are lacking that big fall front that knocks those temperatures down below average because these are still above average all the way through. Well, maybe Mother Nature is just waiting for it to be officially October, which is right around the corner. I guess she's playing games this year. That's all I can say. <laughs> You're right about that. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. You got it. 453, 76 degrees. Up next, Paw Patrol sets a new record, plus a look ahead to tonight's premiere of Dancing with the Stars here on KSET 12. Another season of Dancing with the Stars debuts tonight here on KSET 12, and the writer strike could be ending very soon. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Today could be a big day in the effort to officially end the writer's strike. It's expected that the WGA leadership will vote today on whether or not to approve the deal, which was accepted by the negotiating committee on Sunday. If leadership signs off, then the deal goes to the 11,000 or so WGA members for approval. That process could take a few days to a week. And while that's happening, writers will be allowed to start working again. ABC confirms the dancing will go on. Dancing with the Stars, which might have been impacted by the writer's strike, will premiere tonight on both ABC and Disney+. Plus. And Veep actor Matt Walsh will be in the ballroom. Last week, the WGA member had said he was pausing his participation in the show during the strike. His rep confirms Walsh is once again down to dance. I'm not just another pretty face. I'm actually a really good dancer. Get ready. A new breed of heroes. Superpowers are real. Hits the big screen. We're going to need a new name for ourselves. How about the Paw Patrol? But more. You could call it a record barking event. The goal to have the most dogs attending a film screening. And Paramount Pictures did it to promote their upcoming film, Paw Patrol, The Mighty Movie. 219 dogs showed up with their owners, and they had to sit through at least 10 minutes of the film. It happened outside the Gene Autry Museum in Los Angeles. The previous best was 199 dogs at a drive-in in Illinois. 
Welcome to the Mayhem. And Muppets Mayhem star Lily Singh is 35 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News. Time now, 457 and 76 degrees for now. President Biden set to make history today by joining United Auto Workers on the picket lines in Detroit. Up next, what the president hopes to accomplish with this visit. And are you tired of how things are going in Bear County? Well, now is your chance for your voice to be heard by a top official. Up next, when and where you can join the special community, meet up with Judge Peter Sakai. And we did not get our wish. The accident on 35 South of Space Center has not yet cleared, but we'll have a look at weather coming up at 501 and then traffic with Stephen Cavazos at 503. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. President Biden joins striking UAW members on the picket line. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, how the union continues to pressure the car companies. Looking out there with live cam now, not too bad, eh, in the mid 70s. And yesterday driving around, I, I got some cog cover, so I was thankful for that. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, September 26th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good Monday and tiny, tiny, tiny chances of rain in some parts today. Storms seemed to dance right around the Alamo City in the last 24 hours or so. And Justin's here with more on those bad dance moves. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Tell you why they're real bad. Worse than mine. Uh, the San Antonio Dome was in full effect yesterday. We had the rain kind of move around. And some places did get rain yesterday evening. Downtown was one of them. Uh, but most in Bear County missed out, so it's pretty dry this morning. We bring in the school bus, 74 as you head out the door, partly cloudy light winds. There is a chance for a few more storms this afternoon, but it'll be hit or miss uh, straight storms, so uh, don't get your hopes up too high. Temperatures around 95, we're still well above average, and that uh, looks to stay that way. Uh, at least to the foreseeable future. Let's go outside for you. We can see that uh, we've got partly cloudy skies at the moment. 77 at the airport feels like 79. Seguin's at 74 and uh, Bernie at 70 right now. Our rain chances just 10 to 20 percent today and tomorrow. So again, it'll be afternoon just isolated to stray activity. And then beyond that, our rain chances go away. I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's uh, it's just back to more of a dry pattern. Uh, the annual solar eclipse, we've been keeping the countdown. We're excited about it here at the Weather Center. 18 days away, we are going to have more information about the solar eclipse coming up on uh, KSAT.com. We're going to be putting out some stories here pretty soon uh, to talk more about it. And we've got the big total solar eclipse next year. So pretty exciting times here in South Texas. Not exciting, though, if you're on the roadway this morning, especially along I-35, right, Stephen? Yeah, hey, good morning, Justin. Uh, things aren't looking too great over here at 35 at Space Center. This is a shot we've had our eyes on for quite a while. We'll take that camera shot in, and it doesn't really appear much has changed out there. This is in the southbound lanes of I-35 as you approach that close to that 410 interchange, and you can still see we have a stretch of traffic out there, and along with a glob of flashing lights. Tough to say if there are paramedics out there, but this crash actually was reported sometime after 3.30 this morning, so we know crews have been out there for quite some time working to clear this up, and sadly for anyone that's traveling through the area. You're going to encounter delays as we take you to the map. There in the southbound lanes, again, as you approach Space Center, you have a little bit of yellow and, of course, that red that starts to stretch and build as the morning commute does get moving. Right now, that is our only incident that we are monitoring here in the traffic lab. I've been talking to our friends at Transguide, and we're not seeing anything else on the cameras, but we're going to keep a close eye on things as the morning commute does get moving here. But thankfully, for the majority of San Antonio, you should be in the clear if you are heading out the door in the next few minutes. But we'll keep a close eye on this crash and hope for a better update coming up a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. The search for an interim school board trustee continues in the Northeast School District. Last night, board members voted to hold four more interviews for its open District 2 seat. The previous trustee, Terry Williams, died in August. Now, Williams served as the board's vice president. She would have been up for re-election in 2026. District 2 is represented in this NEISD map in yellow. It consists of NEISD's southeastern region just east of I-35 and Austin Highway from Topper Wine Road down to Fort Sam Houston. Now, trustees began interviewing eight candidates earlier this month. Right now, it's not clear when the board could make a final decision. Whoever is appointed will serve as the interim District 2 trustee until the May election. 
If you missed your chance to speak with Bear County's top leaders about issues that you care about, don't worry, you have another shot later today. Judge Peter Sakai is inviting the community to attend the second of his four community conversations at the Will W. Jackson Community Hall in the city's northeast side. That meeting is set to start at 5.30 this evening. You can find the dates for the remaining meetings on our website at ksat.com. San Antonio parents united by the tragic murders of their sons and daughters. About a dozen families showed up to remember their loved ones at an event at University Methodist Church last night. Now families say it's the senseless murders that have taken lives as well as affected countless others for generations to come. Keep your faith uh, going and that's what I do every morning. You know, that's what gets me out of bed. My faith and God, he gives me the strength to do it every single day. San Antonio Police and Bear County Sheriff's investigators also attended to encourage families to continue to be a voice for their loved ones' unsolved murders. Now on to the United Auto Workers strike that continues to expand. Members have now expanded the strike to over 20 states. As ABC's Ike Ajachi reports, President Biden is planning to join the picket line today in Michigan. We are the this morning, it's day 12 of the United Auto Workers Union strike against the big three U.S. car manufacturers, General Motors, Chrysler Stellantis, and Ford. In his strongest move of support yet, President Biden planning to punctuate his vocal support for auto workers today in Michigan by joining members on the picket line, a move many believe to be a first for a sitting president in living memory. They give everything from their pensions on, and they save the automobile industry. Former President Trump will bring his own message to a crowd of union members on Wednesday. Members of the union are demanding a 40% increase in wages and stronger benefits. Now, if you take a look at the significant increase in salaries for the executives and growth of the industry, they should benefit from it. The most recent SEC filings show all of the big three CEOs earned more than $20 million last year, with GM CEO Mary Barra topping the list at $29 million. The three CEOs earned around 300 times what the average employee earns, according to the Wall Street Journal. Nobody wants to be out here. We want to be in there working. We want to be, you know, getting parts to our customers and to the dealers. Um, but it comes to a point where you had to draw a line in the sand. On Friday, Union President Sean Fain announcing their strike expanded to dozens of more GM and Chrysler Stellantis factories across 20 states. 13% of the union's 146,000 members are now in the picket lines. Ford, however, has been spared. Fain saying Ford is showing that they're serious about reaching a deal. In a statement, Ford saying there's still significant gaps to close on key economic issues. As President Biden makes his way to Michigan today, the White House insist that the details of any deal should be left up to the negotiating parties. Ike Ajaji, ABC News, Washington. Time now is 5.07 and 76 degrees for now. If you ever get tired of talking to yourself and you really don't want to talk to anybody else, there's now a third option. Up next, how ChatGPT is making it possible to talk to its chatbot. And the countdown to Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas is on. Up next, how to maximize your money during the upcoming shopping season, including finding good deals on travel. Well, we were asked to grab an umbrella yesterday. What about our Tuesday? What's the uh, plan of action there as far as weather and our forecast? We'll talk to Justin coming up. 5-11, we may not feel like it, but fall is officially here, and that means the holiday shopping season is coming up soon. As CNN's Cole Higgins reports, exper experts say it's a good time to rein in your spending, strengthen your savings, and create a year-end financial plan. The countdown to Halloween, Thanksgiving, and winter holidays is on, and experts say now is a great time to tackle your expenses to avoid a financial holiday hangover. First and foremost, Christmas happens every year on the same day, so knowing that it's coming, allow yourself the time to prepare. Here are three tips to prepare and make the most of the upcoming season while keeping your budget in check. One, plan your shopping and expenses ahead. Decide in advance how much you need for this holiday season and start putting money aside now. Create a Christmas or a holiday sinking fund so that you're earmarking money that's specifically designated for the holidays and you're not forced to dip into your emergency fund. 
Tip number two, audit your spending. Look carefully at your typical monthly spending, checking for areas where you can cut back now to better manage any additional spending you want to do later. So you want to be able to have your ducks in a row. You want to have your finances organized. You want to have cash on hand. And tip number three, if you're planning to travel, book early and consider international destinations. With one travel expert saying some overseas flights may be cheaper than domestic options. There's just going to be a lot more deals on flights to Europe, a lot more deals on flights within Europe, deals on hotels in Europe going forward into the fall, into the winter and beyond. For Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. Time now, 513, 76 degrees. Sony is giving away a free video game to anyone who purchases a new PS5. We're going to tell you how it works and the deadline coming up. And checking Trans Guy 281 at the quarry, no problems there, but this is the problem we've been watching since we went on the air at 430 this morning. 35 southbound at Space Center, not too far from Bamsey. Stephen has eyes on it, and we'll have updates coming up. Imagine a world with no drama. I haven't signed Jody's card yet. At 4imprint, finding the promotional products you need to create a memorable moment is an easy mission. Our expert team will take care of every detail to make your success a certainty. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. NFL Plus. I catch live, local, and primetime games on my phone. And I catch every touchdown every Sunday afternoon on NFL Red Zone. Catch it all and start streaming NFL Plus today. Plans start at $6.99 a month. It's a moment time of day. Non-drowsy Claritin knocks out symptoms from over 200 allergens without knocking you out. Feel the clarity and make today the most wonderful time of the year. Live Claritin clear. OpenAI, the maker of ChatGPT, is rolling out a new voice and image feature that makes its AI chatbot see, hear, and speak. Nothing disturbing about any of that. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, big advances for ChatGPT. The AI engine can now see, hear, and speak. The company says ChatGPT can understand spoken words, respond with a synthetic voice, and process images. Their updates will be rolling out to paying users in the next two weeks. A new program on Reddit will let users earn extra cash. Certain Reddit users who meet requirements will receive real-world money for their contributions on the site. X, which is formerly known as Twitter, recently launched a similar program paying creators based on the impressions their posts generate. And Sony has an early holiday present for PS5 fans. Anyone who buys and activates one of the systems between now and October 20th will receive a free game. Users will receive a choice of 12 titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. 518. All right, busy morning. Yeah, you know, actually, uh, we've been starting off our mornings with incidents on the roadways. Never a great way to start the day, but we always are here to get you through it. We do have a crash that was reported at 35 at Space Center, and it's still active from what I've last seen. But I want to get a look around town so everyone else knows what they can expect as they head out the door and get the commute rolling. 410 at Blanco still looks pretty quiet, uh, in both in the east and westbound lanes, and 281 at the quarry. Uh, traffic's moving nice and steady out there as well. But looks uh, like that crash may have cleared, actually, now that we have our eyes on at 35 at Space Center. We'll get that shot up for you in just a moment. But for the most part, our commute is usually quiet. But as I mentioned, the big issue was right there along 35 at Space Center. Now, at least one lane was blocked earlier this morning, but it led to a pretty big slowdown. And it does still look like we have some traffic that's moving through the area. So good news is that has cleared, but it's tough to say if paramedics arrived on the scene because the shot was so far away. And you can still see we have a little bit of that congestion that's moving through the area. That should clear pretty soon. But for the most part, that's what we can expect. Some clear roadways as people are heading out the door. If you are traveling into San Antonio, here's just a quick look at your travel times. The journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound, 24 minutes right here to the Alamo City. 26 along 281 southbound if you were heading in from Mulverde. And 24 minutes along I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. But uh, yeah, Justin, better news to start to uh, to continue on our morning. But uh, yeah, it was a little bit rough for a minute there for drivers. Yeah, I, I, it looked that way for sure. Uh, we like smooth sailing Tuesdays. That's what we like to see. 
Uh, hey, I want to show you a picture last night. Th this was incredible. We had those storms bubble up here over San Antonio. This was a beautiful shot taken on San Antonio South Side. You can see these storms building vertically, and so they, they kind of mushroom out. They kind of look like, uh, you know, a big cloud. Well, obviously, it's a cloud, but it looks sort of like a nuclear cloud, right? Uh, as we head into uh, as we headed into the evening hours yesterday, this is what we were seeing here across San Antonio. It really was beautiful. Right at sunset, you get the beautiful colors. And there were some storms that dropped some rain around downtown. 0.41, uh, Lavernia about half an inch. Sutherland Springs, same story. There was some rain yesterday morning, of course, up across the hill country. So good numbers there. But we talked about San Antonio kind of missing out. You see the hole here in the rain right over San Antonio and right up and down uh, I-10 here. So at, uh, at least as you go east, not great, not ideal. We could use a little bit more rain. There is some in the forecast today, but it's not a great chance. I, I also we got up to 98 yesterday. So if you're if you were to end September today, this will be the hottest September on record right after the hottest August on record and the hottest summer on record and the second hottest July on record. 2023 has just been one heck of a year. Uh, 2019, we were at 85.8. Right now, we're averaging 87.4. So uh, we have uh, about a week or so left here to get this average down a little bit. But the way it's looking, we're going to finish out on top. Uh, last six hours, we saw some showers and storms south to San Antonio. Those are pushing away. We still have a frontal battery. It's weak, but it's there. And so with this around today, we can't completely rot some showers and storms this afternoon. But it will be a lot like yesterday where it'll take until the heating of the day and we'll just get some of that pop up stuff. So this is around five o'clock and this model has been notorious for kind of overproducing the rain. So it may not be this widespread, but just some isolated uh, to stray showers and storms today and then tomorrow a little disturbance rolls through. So uh, we'll see a few more, I think, by the afternoon. Uh, same kind of idea, just the pop up stuff. And then beyond Wednesday, rain chances just shut off. Uh, 75 at 8 o'clock, noontime, 86. And by the afternoon, we're up around 95. There is that 10% chance of a shower storm today. So it's not a bad idea to have the umbrella with you today, just in case. Uh, but I don't, uh, I don't anticipate everyone needing to use the umbrella. 77 right now, dew point is at 71. It's still humid and we've got calm winds. Let's go out to the tropics. We've got a, a nice area of thunderstorms here in the Caribbean, but that is not uh, looking to develop. This is not some place that uh, we're worried about as far as tropical development. Uh, there are a couple systems, though, out in the Atlantic. we got Philippe now, Tropical Storm Philippe, that has developed. And then behind that, we have soon to be Rena. It's not named yet, but it will be very soon. It looks pretty good here on the satellite picture. And the latest uh, tracks, it's kind of interesting. Philippe weakens as it moves west and then arena is going to take basically the same exact path which usually isn't good because uh, the storm in front of it's going to kick up some cooler water and the conditions won't be so great uh, but we'll see where this ends up uh, we certainly do need to watch these still this time of year uh, extended forecast 95 tomorrow 95 thursday again small chances of rain tomorrow though beyond that it's it's quiet we do get some lower humidity by the weekend so that would mean some nice mornings but these temperatures are still well above average so that's why i feel pretty confident that we're going to end september as the warmest september on record are we surprised no it's a, it's a really. broken record <laughs> a broken <Thank> record <laughs> it continues to be a broken record it seems like every month we've added a new superlative to how things are going pretty much and it's it's amazing to me that we have not gotten a fall front down here at least a good strong front to even get into North Texas just hasn't happened yet. Here's my theory. I, I, I think once those start happening, mm -hmm. they're gonna we're gonna be much cooler and probably rainier than any of us ever imagined for the rest of the it's winter. Possible. I, I know Mother Nature has a history of just sort of flipping the switch. Right. And that uh, that is very well what could happen. And I yeah. say bring it on. Yeah, I think we're all ready for yeah, it. I think we are. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Justin. Yeah. I, plus, I want to see Steph and Turtlenecks in the newsroom. <laughs> between and, and a blanket. And, and, and ponchos <laughs> and everything, everything that she wears to layer up in the newsroom. 523, 76 degrees. Up next, the hit Netflix series becomes a real life competition. Plus, Rick and Morty are back and Paw Patrol sets a world record. Pick three numbers, one, two, two. Fireball two, uh, zero, sorry. Uh, daily four number 7086. Fireball seven. I was just hung up that I said two, two. <laughs> That's cute. Cash five, 627, 31, 32, 34. And your text is two, step 10, 28, 33, 35. Bonus ball 16. Your Powerball numbers 10, 12, 22, 36, 50. 
Powerball 4, Power Play 2. Good luck. 527 people will soon compete for millions in a real life version of the terrifying games from the hit Netflix series Squid Game. CNN's Rick Damagella has more in today's Hollywood Minute. You have got to be kidding me. Oh my God. Squid Game becomes a reality. The Netflix hit has been adapted into an actual competition series with a prize of over $4.5 million. This is your first look at Squid Game The Challenge, which premieres November 22nd. Hey, look, Morty, I'm a leg. A leg, Morty! Rick and Morty return for more hijinks. This is a sneak peek at the upcoming seventh season of the Emmy-winning animated series, which sees new voice actors taking on the titular mad scientist and his beloved grandson. Rick and Morty is back on Adult Swim on October 15th. It's a new Guinness World Records title. Congratulations. Paw Patrol celebrates a massive achievement. A screening was held in Los Angeles for Paw Patrol The Mighty Movie, the latest big screen version of the popular cartoon. Families with dogs attended the event with 219 canines present in total. The big number was enough to set the Guinness world record for most dogs attending a film screening. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 528, 76 degrees. Americans are not so confident with the way the country is headed, and a looming government shutdown isn't helping. Up next, what a new survey shows about cost of living increases and those who would be affected the most during a shutdown. You can now officially tell your grandkids one day, back in my day, Netflix <laughs> sent out DVDs by mail. <laughs> Up next, when the last DVD will be sent out this week, the Aww, end of an era. How sad. <laughs> Plus, how Costco members are getting an extra health care perk that costs just $29. And ahead on GMSA at 6, an urgent message to parents on where your baby sleeps, how to avoid some unwanted hazards that could hurt your bundle of joy. As a potential government shutdown looms, active military members and Border Patrol agents may soon have to go without pay thanks to the stalemate in Washington. We're forced to make all these bad choices and bad Could also affect more wallets. Up next, the amount of U.S. employees who now say the cost of living is getting to be too much for their salaries. And here looking out there with live cam, mid-70s, that's tolerable. We can handle that. Um, hoping for cloud cover at least today, if not a little tiny chance of a shower. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 26th of September. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. Uh, how's your week so far? How was the Monday? Well, Monday was fine. Yeah. Tuesday is my least favorite day of the week. <laughs> you put that out there, but I am mm -hmm. very happy that uh, we're getting closer to the weekend. Yeah, well, uh, let's be totally transparent here. We all agreed off camera that we wanted to jump right to <laughs> Thursday or Friday. It was Thursday. optional. Yes. Uh, you said you wanted to go oh, to I'm a Thursday guy because it's, it's just before the uh, Friday. So yeah. Yeah. I just checked out and went straight to Friday. Friday, <laughs> Friday. Yeah, Friday. Friday on this side. You're a bunch Thursday, of cheaters. Yeah. So that's okay. It's over here. <laughs> yeah. It's is a Tuesday. wonderful day. It is. Yeah. It is. Uh, well, so yesterday the rain kind of uh, avoided most of San Antonio, right? Uh, there were some good uh, pictures taken here at KSAT. Uh, uh, I saw Adam Kasky posted some pictures of the storms. There. We're all around downtown. Uh, there was a little bit of rain here. Uh, temperatures, though, still pretty warm. 77 this morning as uh, we wake up on our Tuesday. We're going to make it a good Tuesday. Temperatures will eventually uh, make their way into the mid-90s today. There are some small rain chances again this afternoon. So if you missed out yesterday, there is a small chance uh, you can see a little bit more today. And yeah, temperatures are a little cooler to the north, a little warmer to the south. There's a weak frontal boundary there, and that's one of the reasons we're going to get some showers and storms today. So let's look at the forecast here. 75 at 8 o'clock. By noontime, 86, mostly sunny, and then by the afternoon, uh, right around 95, partly cloudy, straight storm. We're talking 10%, so this is not a great chance, but a uh, chance is a chance. Pollen count yesterday, molds were the big problem. I suspect that uh, we'll still see a little bit of this today, that they'll stay in the high category. Fall elm's been sticking around, so we'll probably see that again today. And then we've got pigweed and ragweed, pretty typical fall pollen count here. Uh, if uh, we could get some more rain, we get these mold counts to go high, which higher, which wouldn't be a great thing, but we will take the rain. Could we see more in the forecast? We're going to look at that coming up here in just a few minutes. Let's toss it back over to Stephen now and check in on that I-35 and Space Center accident. Well, thankfully, that's already cleared out, Justin. As we get a look there at 35 at Space Center, no more flashing lights, which is good news. But as drivers are heading out the door and uh, getting out there at US-90 at General McMullen, they'll see a little bit more traffic. Always expected, guys, as we get a little bit closer to morning rush, but we're not there yet. So if you do have to leave and maybe get the day started early, you are in 
of luck. Enjoy that cup of coffee at home and just enjoy the drive to wherever your destination may lead you. But 410 at Marbach, quiet roadways, and that's what we're really going to see right now. So enjoy it while it lasts. Plenty of green on the screen, but as always, there will be some overnight construction or maybe construction happening later. We'll have more on that uh, coming up in the next few minutes, but as you can see, a stall also popped up along State Highway 16 Bandera Road, not too far from Loop 1604. We'll get a closer look a little later on, but I want to get you through some travel times. Still pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound with 28 minutes at this hour, 33 along 87 northbound if you are heading in from Lavernia. And right now for our friends down in Floresville, should be about 29 minutes to get here to San Antonio. But we'll have another update on construction coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark, what's up? Thank you, Stephen. This morning, the conference board releasing its most recent reading on consumer confidence. Many economists are expecting confidence will go down for the second month. That's because, as CNN's John Lawrence reports, as the threat of a government shutdown gets closer by the day, many Americans are worried about their wallets. Although inflation in the U.S. is easing from four-decade highs, financial concerns are rising for many households. I have to cut down on like what I should eat, what I should buy, where I should go, do I want to go out tonight? According to a Bank of America survey shared exclusively with CNN, 67% of U.S. employees say the cost of living is increasing faster than their salaries. The study also found 64% of workers say they are stressed about their financial future, while 80% of people between 35 and 44 years old say they feel likewise. We're forced to make all these bad choices and bad decisions just to live our lifestyles, so it's pretty sad. A similar, albeit much bigger, situation about money flow is hovering over the Beltline. Funding the government is one of the most basic fundamental responsibilities of the Congress. And if Republicans in the House don't start doing the job, we should stop electing. If a deal isn't made by the end of the week, the government will shut down. Among the potential impacts, active military members and Border Patrol agents will go without pay. I'm looking at it through the lens. How do we prevent this shutdown from, or, or how do we minimize it from uh, to 10 days instead of 10 weeks? And that starts now, not waiting and keep continuing the, the uh, finger pointing game. I'm John Lawrence reporting. California Governor Gavin Newsom has officially signed legislation into law that prohibits school districts from banning books and other school materials based on protected subjects like race, gender, and sexuality. The new law also gives the state the authority to buy textbooks for students. It can also potentially issue a financial penalty if a school board does not approve material that meets the new California state standards. A new survey found almost 7% of adults and 1% of kids in the U.S. have struggled with what some refer to as long COVID last year. The National Center for Health Statistics say that translates into as many as 962,000 children and about 18 million adults. The agency estimates are, estimates are co consistent with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention surveys. However, they are lower in earlier studies focused on long COVID questions. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimates that up to 23 million people in the U.S. have had what it considers to be long COVID. Costco members can now get health checkups online for just $29. It's a new service from Costco in partnership with a health care to direct to consumer marketplace company called Sesame. Costco members can visit book visits with medical providers nationwide directly through their membership in all 50 states. It doesn't bill through their health insurance. Costco is among several retailers who are providing direct care to customers. Amazon in August announced that its virtual clinic was also now available nationwide. Other retailers like CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart have made similar moves. Time now, 538 and 76 degrees for now. Lego was thinking about remaking its iconic bricks from recycled plastic bottles to help the environment, but now it says, nope, we'll tell you why next. And you can file this under the back in my day category. It's the final curtain call for Netflix's DVD service. Up next, can you guess the first DVD the company ever sent to customers? I, I think I know this trivia, but I'm not going to peek. <laughs> I want to hear what it is yeah, coming up. Too. Outside with Live Cam, thanks for starting your day with GMSA. We'll check in with Stephen and Justin coming up a little bit later on in this newscast.
Welcome back. It's 542. In your morning consumer headlines, Lego has ditched its plan to make bricks from recycled plastic bottles. The toy maker made the decision after three years of testing the more climate friendly recycled material. Lego says it found that the manufacturing process of the alternative material would cause more planet heating pollution than the current production of oil-based bricks. Now, the company said they also found that the recycled plastic wasn't as durable and safe, and bricks didn't stick together as well or pull apart as easily. LEGO has pledged to use only sustainable materials in its products by 2032. It's the end of an era for Netflix this week for at least one part of the streaming giant's business. It will no longer offer mail order DVD rentals. A DVD service officially ends this Friday. At 1.40 million people were subscribed in the mail service and over the years more than 5 billion DVDs were sent to customers. The first DVD Netflix ever mailed out was Beetlejuice <laughs> back in 1998 and a footnote. Already announced for 2024, Beetlejuice 2. Yeah. Tim Burton is back. I think we're going to see a, quite a few familiar faces, including a frequent Tim Burton collaborator, Johnny Depp. Yeah, and I think Winona Ryder yes. as well. Yes, I believe yeah. she's already on board too. So look for that coming up in 2024. Yeah, can't wait. Time now, 543 and 76 degrees. Let's check Transguide real quick out there at uh, 543. 281 at the quarry looks great. So does 410 at Marbach. We'll get an update on the traffic situation with our expert, Stephen Cavazos, very soon. I'm back and we have another look at traffic here at 35 at San Marcos as things are moving for this Tuesday morning. But we take a look there at 281 at the quarry. We have a lot more folks that are waking up and getting out the door. So as we get closer to 6 a.m., we can expect to see some congestion out there. 410 at Marbach, though, still looks pretty quiet. But we get you to our map and we still have that stall vehicle that's actually along Loop 1604. So just be on the lookout and check your vehicles before you hit the roads. I wanted to bring you some attention to some uh, bring your attention, I should say, to some travel times and uh, what you can expect in terms of construction later today because this could slow you down along Northwest Military Highway, the curb and sidewalk construction. Remember, this uh, started yesterday and it will take us all the way to the end of the work week, September 29th, 7 in the morning to 6 in the evening. So it's a pretty lengthy project. Drivers, it's during that time you'll see alternating lane closures in both directions from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. But as always, head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There's a full list of closures that are happening in and around the Alamo City. A lot happening throughout the rest of the month of September and into the early days of October. But uh, we got to get through Tuesday first and I'm going to find three nice things to say about Tuesday. The first is it's Taco Tuesday. Very nice. Yeah. That's a big read. Yeah, that's a big yeah, I'll plus. give it some thought. That's, that's a key selling point for <laughs> yeah. today. Yeah, that's you're a plus side. You're still looking for two more. <laughs> you have some time. Yeah, yeah. Figure it out. I'll have it for the end of the show. Okay. Promise. And oh Fair my enough. goodness, this map you're going to show us. Uh, are, I hope everyone in Del Rio is okay. Are you okay out there in Del Rio? I mean, these numbers. Don't adjust your screen. Wow. wow. Talk about color saturation. Uh, oh, why, yeah. And why am I showing you this? Because Del Rio has the distinction of being the hottest place in the country yesterday, beating the likes of Death Valley, which got up to 103, and Phoenix, which only got up to 102. So congratulations, Del Rio. This happens at least once a year, I feel like. But uh, yes, you were the a big winner yesterday, if you want to look at it that way. And this is the incredible part here. Del Rio's had 55 days this year at 105 or above. Easily a record. The next highest number, 2020. They had 31 days that year, 1998, 19. And you see the list there. But uh, this has been a record-setting year. San Antonio, Del Rio, any of the reporting sites Records have fallen, it feels like, in so many different ways. But uh, yesterday, just a brutal day in Del Rio. High temperatures here today will be in the mid-90s, so you will be a little bit cooler. San Antonio, mid-90s as well, 95. We were at 98 yesterday, so we'll shave off a few degrees, but not many. It's still hot. And as we look at the weather where you live outside right now, we've got uh, 77 at the airport. feels like 79, so we're already carrying a heat index. There is humidity out there. Uh, even though we have a frontal body that kind of snakes around the uh, snakes across the area, we've still got humidity and it'll still be fairly humid today. New Braunfels 74, Bernie 70, Kerrville 70, so no big cool down. Again, uh, despite the fact, yeah, there is this frontal boundary here. It's weak, it's falling apart, but it has been the focus for some of these showers and storms over the last couple days. Had some storms last night, those pushed south towards Corpus Christi. And we had a few showers this morning out near Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Those have since dissipated. So there's uh, nothing on the radar right now. And as we look at the forecast today, 
This is five o'clock does show a couple of showers and storms popping up. I wouldn't get your hopes up. Uh, this model, just based on what we saw yesterday and what we've seen the last couple days, this has been kind of over producing rain. I still think we have a shot at some showers and storms with that front around. It's a, a definitely a possibility, but they'll be few and far between. And then tomorrow, a little disturbance rolls through, and that may be enough to spark off some more showers and storms on your Wednesday. Again, we're talking 10 to 20 percent. So you got to get uh, lucky and be underneath one of these storms as they kind of develop. Uh, and hopefully uh, that'll be the case for you today. Uh, there are the rain chances after Wednesday. They go away. It's uh, it's quite forecast in that regard. It's temperature wise. We're talking mid 90s. Not much changes here. This is above average weather and uh, we see that going into next week. I'm still searching for that first front first good front to kind of blast through and not only bring rain, but some cooler temperatures. It's not in the forecast yet. Yeah, another nature is just taking your time. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe October. Let's hope. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. 551, 76 degrees. In early 2021, everyone was suddenly talking about the investments in a struggling chain of video game stores. I'm going to first look at a David and Goliath saga that is now a Hollywood movie with an all star cast. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the auto workers' strike. President Biden preparing to join the workers on the picket line. And the new scam targeting people who have to start paying back their student loans. How you can protect yourself. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Holy. I will tell you, I've never seen anything like it. Holy. <laughs> Is the craziest I think I've ever seen. Everything okay? Eleven million dollars. What are you gonna do? Get a Ferrari? What the? Oh, language. The baby's here. Dumb money sets up the GameStop stock drama as a clear battle between everyday retail investors and their well-heeled counterparts. Wall Street is betting that this company is gonna fail. But if it fails, these hedge fund people make a ton of money. My 24-year-old son was living with us, and he was involved in Wall Street bets. So I got to live vicariously through him. I saw this wild ride that was happening, the intensity of it. Babe, how much did we make today? Five million. How much did we lose today? A billion. And yesterday? Four million. And yesterday? A billion. It was just a visceral ride. And that intensity, that emotion, is what I wanted to capture in the film. You got rich dudes pissing in their pants right now. They're coming after you. We need to talk about the GameStop situation. Retail traders always lose. <laughs> the writer producers say it wasn't just about the money. We spent all this time on Wall Street bets and watching these TikToks and seeing the joy people felt in, you know, that buying the stock actually made them feel part of something. And you don't need to be a stock market whiz to understand the movie. It's about regular people who feel small, who feel marginalized, who feel isolated, who feel powerless, and who are angry, frustrated, screaming at the heavens about the, the terrible unfairness in the world today. You've been served. Wall Street cheated. Surprise, surprise. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. United Way in Bear County still teaming up to cool people down with free Fox fans. Project Cool has provided seniors and people with disabilities fans for months now. There's not much time left if you still need one. You have until September 30th. Just call United Way Help Hotline at 211 to schedule that delivery directly to your home. Can okay, you believe the month of September is already ready to come to a close? And that means it's going to start looking a little bit more like fall, especially at the San Antonio Pumpkin Festival. It's a celebration that will run Thursdays through Sundays from September 28th through October 29th on Broadway, not far from the Pearl. The party will have train rides, a corn maze, and of course, pumpkin carving. You can read more about it right now on our website at ksat.com. Well, last night, Pink and the Beach Boys concerts cause a headache for some drivers downtown, but it's not over yet. Yeah, you can get around tonight's Guns N' Roses concert here in San Antonio. And up next, the price tag going up to keep your current vehicle moving. Why it's happening now, why one local shop says it could get worse before it gets better. And checking Transguide right now, 35 Space Center much, running much better than it was just over an hour ago. There's 90 at General McMullen and 35 at San Marcos. We'll be back after this. 
This morning on GMSA, new details on a chaotic Monday morning at a local high school. The charges the person behind it could be facing after making false threats. Plus, President Biden joined striking UAW members on the picket line. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, how the union continues to pressure the car companies. And here at home, let's look out there with live cam starting at 76 degrees. Not too bad, but it's fall, y'all. Just doesn't feel like it quite yet. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It is 6 o'clock on your Tuesday. It is September 26th. Yay, we made it to Tuesday. I know it might be a tough day for some people, but we're still moving along during the week, and we're still hoping that... Uh, We'll have some kind of change maybe next week or somewhere in the near future. All we can do is hope at this point. <laughs> Justin is in for Mike and he joins us now with an update on how our Tuesday is shaping up, even though it's still pretty darn early out there. Yeah. Maybe we should just bank on 2024 at this point. Just okay. Get it to next year. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's no, we're going to stay positive. Okay. I, there will be some fall like weather somewhere down the line, just not in the immediate forecast. It's definitely not a sit on your back porch. Have some coffee type of morning. It's warm and humid out there. Some of us did get rain yesterday. We could see the storms. I could see the storms. I didn't get any in my house, but this was a beautiful picture from south side of San Antonio yesterday looking towards downtown. You can see the big billowing clouds here. They did produce some rain. We picked up about four tenths of an inch right around downtown San Antonio. And I'll show you some of those rainfall totals coming up here in just a bit. 9 a.m., 78 degrees. As you head out to lunch today, 86, it'll be mostly sunny. I think we could see a shower or two, maybe a storm this afternoon. There's a small chance of that. Temperatures will make their way up to around 95 or so for a high. So a little cooler than yesterday, but not by much. And I do want to remind you, we're just 18 days away now from our annual solar eclipse. We're going to see the ring of fire here in San Antonio. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, the moon moves right in front of the sun. You still got to use those glasses to see it but it will be an awesome sight to see. And of course, we have the total solar eclipse coming up next year in April. So a lot going on, uh, at least when we're talking space weather here. Uh, let's toss it over to Stephen now and talk uh, traffic. How are things looking there? Any improvements? So we'll actually do have some improvements here, Justin. We're seeing uh, that traffic moving along 410 and Ingram North without any trouble. But as we get closer to that morning and rush, we are going to see a little bit more traffic and some minor problems, hopefully. But you can see right there, US 90 eastbound at Couples Road. It's pretty minor, a stalled vehicle there. And just make sure to watch out, move over or slow down if you see those emergency lights or flashing lights out there and check your vehicles before you get moving this morning. I haven't seen a whole lot else take place out on the roadways. Of course, we did start our newscast off with some bumps along the road along 35 southbound at Space Center. That crash is already cleared out and as drivers are waking up and getting the day started, they won't encounter any problems. But again, just be safe out there. If your travel times are going to take you right here to the Alamo City, well, here they are. 37 northbound is still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton with 27 minutes, 28 along US 90 eastbound if you are heading in from Castro and that arrival from Lytle on, along 35 northbound should be 17 minutes. So nothing out of the ordinary here, but we'll keep watching things closely and I'll be back with another traffic update in the next 15 minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. A man is in jail this morning after a scary scene at a downtown restaurant that was hosting a rap concert. Now, San Antonio police say a man fired several shots into the air at Smoke Barbecue on East Crockett Street. Now, no one was hurt. However, police officers arrested James Alvarado after it happened on Sunday around 2.30 a.m. Restaurant security stopped Alvarado and held him until police got there. He is charged with unlawfully carrying a weapon and for being a felon in the possession of a firearm. Now, court records show that he is actually on probation for a weapon charge from last year. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a disturbance at East Central High School Monday morning might have been a hoax. However, it still caused a lockdown and panic from parents. This was the scene yesterday morning. The District Police Department received a call shortly before classes started naming a particular student. And in the background of that call were apparent gunshots. Officers from several agencies searched the campus yesterday and found nothing, but concern from parents and students was quite real. We're just scared as parents. Given everything that's happened, it was, it was kind of scary. At first I thought it was a joke, and then my sister texted me that it was like an actual thing, and I was like, all right, you know, we gotta be quiet and be serious.
No one could blame them for feeling that way. The Bear County Sheriff's Office later said it seems the call came from outside the U.S. and was meant to cause panic. Now, the student who was named in the call was detained but was released when BCSO realized he was the victim of what's called swatting. That's when a prank call activates law enforcement to a fake crime scene. Sheriff's Office says making a hoax call like this would get someone charged with making a felony terroristic threat. To see all the migrants asking for money, asking for food. I don't know that this situation is going to get better anytime soon. This morning, the crisis at the southern border is reaching a breaking point in some cities. Now Mexico is promising to help ease the migration situation in the U.S. As part of an agreement with U.S. immigration, Mexico says it will deport certain immigrants or migrants rather from its border cities and return them to their home countries. Right now it's not clear when the deportations will begin or how long they will last. The move comes as El Paso is seeing large numbers of people living on the streets because there are not enough shelters. City officials there are working on getting more space and resources to handle the influx of migrants. In your other morning headlines, the United Auto Workers strike continues to grow. Members have now expanded that strike to over 20 states. As ABC's Ike Ajachi reports, President Biden is planning to join the picket line today in Michigan. We are this morning, it's day 12 of the United Auto Workers Union strike against the big three U.S. car manufacturers, General Motors, Chrysler Stellantis, and Ford. In his strongest move of support yet, President Biden planning to punctuate his vocal support for auto workers today in Michigan by joining members on the picket line, a move many believe to be a first for a sitting president in living memory. They give everything from their pensions on, and they save the automobile industry. Former President Trump will bring his own message to a crowd of union members on Wednesday. Members of the union are demanding a 40% increase in wages and stronger benefits. Now, if you take a look at the significant increase in salaries for the executives and growth of the industry, they should benefit from it. The most recent SEC filings show all of the big three CEOs earned more than $20 million last year, with GM CEO Mary Barra topping the list at $29 million. The three CEOs earned around 300 times what the average employee earns, according to the Wall Street Journal. Nobody wants to be out here. We want to be in there working. We want to be, you know, getting parts to our customers and to the dealers. Um, but it comes to a point where you had to draw a line in the sand. On Friday, Union President Sean Fain announcing their strike expanded to dozens of more GM and Chrysler Stellantis factories across 20 states. 13% of the union's 146,000 members are now in the picket lines. Ford, however, has been spared. Fain saying Ford is showing that they're serious about reaching a deal. In a statement, Ford saying there's still significant gaps to close on key economic issues. As President Biden makes his way to Michigan today, the White House insists that the details of any deal should be left up to the negotiating parties. Ike Ajaji, ABC News, Washington. In other headlines, New Jersey U.S. Senator Bob Menendez is facing more pressure to step down of being charged with bribery and selling state secrets to Egypt. He and his wife are both charged with taking bribes to help local businessmen fend off criminal investigations. Gold bars and nearly half a million dollars in cash was found in his home, including all those bills stuffed in a jacket embroidered with his name on it. Fellow U.S. Senators are calling on him to quit, but Menendez remains defiant. I firmly believe that when all the facts are presented, not only will I be exonerated, but I still will be the New Jersey's senior senator. Menendez has already been forced to give up his role as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He and his wife and three others are due in court tomorrow. If convicted, he could face 45 years in prison. Looking ahead, one of the biggest political fights of the year has been scheduled. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis will face off against a man who could be considered his political opposite, California Governor Gavin Newsom. Their 90-minute debate will be moderated by Sean Hannity on Fox News in November. But before the governors square off, seven GOP candidates are prepping for tomorrow night's primary debate at the Reagan Library in California. President Donald, uh, former President Donald Trump is once again skipping this debate and will instead speak to striking auto workers in Detroit. 609, 75 degrees. And still to come, Super Bowl champion NFL star Travis Kelsey taking the world by storm after this weekend. Why an appearance from Taylor Swift has his jersey selling out online.
And after the break, the price tag going up to keep your current vehicle moving, why it's happening now and why one shop in town says it could get worse. And let's look out there with live cam. And we can just hope for at least some cloud cover if there's a tiny chance of rain out there for some of our people in our viewing area. We'll be right back.